This is the wild jungle of Belize, an environment so tough that this is where the American and British army send their elite soldiers to undergo the survival training from hell. And for the next 48 hours, we, two complete survival newbies, will be attempting to survive out here using only a machete. I've never even held a machete before. And a few other small tools. We don't have a tent and we don't have drinking water, but we did bring some backup. And there's the rain bit in rainforest. It is rainy season. During the rainy season, rain pours down every day. And without a waterproof shelter, we'll be soaked and miserable in no time. But first, we'll have to make some room for our shelter. It's taking me about as long to cut this little twig as it is taking them to cut that entire tree. <laughs> We've never done anything like this before, so to avoid dying, we brought two survival experts, Wendy and Abba. They both spend years in the special forces of the Belize army. Before it looked like this. So this piece of wood is going to be our house in a little bit. <laughs> On the vine? Yeah. Over. Thank you. Wendy showed us how we can use vines, aka jungle rope. Singe it. Oh, okay. You don't want to make sharp turn. Because it breaks. Yeah, if it makes sharp turn, it is. You could tight? Tight, yeah. <coughs> We have a roof! <laughs> Almost! <laughs> the reason we're doing this is actually because I've been getting more into fishing and outdoor stuff and I just want to see if I really have what it takes to survive in this kind of crazy environment. Alright, splitting this palm leaf to hopefully make a waterproof shelter because it is the rainy season. And it's probably gonna rain tonight, right? Definitely. <laughs> In the next couple of hours. roof over our heads, we'll be spending the night in the jungle, sleeping in a very exposed way. No tent, no sleeping bag, no mosquito net. We'll be very vulnerable to everything around us in the jungle as we sleep. But that's precisely the point. Dirt in my eyes. <laughs> to really push ourselves beyond our comfort zone. Shelter! <laughs> yes! I think I could give you guys my <laughs> So when they said we were gonna make a shelter, I thought it would be like about this high, but instead we now have this to spend the night in. Damn impressive. And hopefully, hopefully these palm leaves are going to make it waterproof. Bam! After hours of hard work, we had marked off the first priority on our survival checklist. But we have been sweating our butts off in the relentless heat and humidity of the jungle without even one sip of water since we entered the jungle. I think reality is now setting in. This is not gonna be a walk in the park. I'm tired, thirsty, I'm hot and sweaty. While building the shelter, we pushed ourselves to keep going because we were excited to learn new things only now did we realize how dehydrated and tired we already were a few hours in. The sun is going to set in a few short hours and we still have lots of things that we need to do before nightfall, so we really need to find water. And out here in the jungle, there are no supermarkets. Whatever you need, you're gonna have to find a way to source it yourself. There was a small river near our camp, but we couldn't drink from it. They said if we drink it, we're probably gonna get sick because our stomachs aren't used to it. First, we need to make our fire because without a fire, we can't boil the water and boiling is the only way we can get the bacteria out of the water and actually drink it and get some fluids in our body because it's been hours now. I think it's probably been six or seven hours of sweating, working, hiking, chopping, building since I last had a sip of water, so. <sighs> I want it so bad, I don't think I've ever been this first year in my life. <laughs> 
we were expecting Abba and Wendy to teach us to make friction fire. You know that technique where you rub sticks together until you get a small spark and then you turn that into a flame. So you want the fire starter where they cut it. Mm -hmm. yeah, with, with small stuff first and then you got big, bigger stuff and then bigger stuff. Yeah. Too wet. Yeah, it's wet. Everything's wet. Yeah. Mm, wet. <laughs> it's probably easier in the dry season to make fire. Yeah. Let's be realistic. The one with the stick, yeah. people stop use those. Yeah. Where, you, where you rub like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it takes you hours. Worse once you don't know how to do it. <laughs> Even with a lighter, it's very hard. Yeah. Life in the jungle. Because everything was so wet, we had to restart and revive the fire several times. But we kept at it because we really needed a good fire. Not only to purify our drinking water, also to cook food and to help protect ourselves against mosquitoes and other animals of the jungle at night. I'm so looking forward to the water. Like seriously, <laughs> that's gonna be so good. <gasps> water. <laughs> It's hot because it's been boiled, but it's still good. It's still probably the best water I've ever it had. It tastes really good, it doesn't taste... It does taste very good, yeah. Now that we had drinking water, the next priority was to get food. Tomorrow we're going to learn how to catch our own food. We're actually going to try and catch our own meat. We're gonna find out tomorrow how we're gonna do that. But today we get it a little easier. Today we'll get some potatoes. Since Abba and Wendy brought us some vegetables just to get us through the first night in the jungle. First you fold it that way. This way? Yeah, like you fold it. Just try to make the vegetables more in the middle. Yeah, this is new to me. <laughs> I've never cooked like this before. Yeah, I'll cook the babies. <laughs> this is the best corn ever. <laughs> so now we have a shelter, but we can't just sleep on the jungle floor. They said we need to make sure that we are off the ground because there are spiders here, there are scorpions here, they all come out at night. Staying on the ground here is not a good idea. In this jungle, there's poisonous trees that will give you huge blisters. And then there's this plant. If you touch these spikes, the more you move, the deeper the spike penetrates your skin. Getting wood is kind of like Home Depot, mm. just a little bit different. <laughs> Well done. Damn. <laughs> it's kind of cool how you can just learn how to make a bed out of wood and literally vine. I hope it holds us through tonight. <laughs> the question is. <laughs> <laughs> As we are trying to get used to the idea of sleeping oh, out in the open like in the jungle at night, the other creatures that we would be sharing our bedroom with started waking up. The noise you're hearing here is howler monkeys, or baboons as they call them in Belize. We saw a few of those in Mexico, but there we didn't exactly have to share our bedroom with them. There's jaguar here too? Yeah, there's mm -hmm. jaguar. And have you seen the jaguar in the jungle? I have, yeah. up where I was working. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We have eight types of snakes that is poisonous. Huh. Here we will find most like pit vipers. Pit vipers are mm. the worst. They're the worst? Yeah, they're like all around. Okay. In the jungle, so it does, they come off large with the jungle. Mm -hmm. They're hard to see them. Mm -hmm. 
these guys are the real deal. Special forces, survival experts, they just go for fun into the jungle without anything. I don't think I could have imagined myself some better guides. I don't think I saw Wendy sit all day, not even once. I don't think I've seen him sitting now. And now he's building his own shelter. <laughs> now that it's dark. This guy's a proper bear. <laughs> Seriously. Well, it's time to wash up for bed. Careful for the pit vipers, Nick. <laughs> well, that's as clean as I'm gonna be at least. My hands are kind of clean. <laughs> this is literally the book that I've been most nervous about. Sleeping in a very, very exposed way. Because you won't have anything separating us from it. Well, basically everything that lives in the Belize jungle. It's going to be home for the night. Alright, good night. Good night. I hope. Is that you at my toe? No. Oh, it's a vine. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. It's fine, people. It's fine. <laughs> Enough, yeah. Nice. You're already up and about. <laughs> you have to shake them, you have to shake them. Don't just put your foot in there. I'm gonna go look for a spot <laughs> to go to the bathroom. Trying to look out for poisonous plants, but sometimes it's hard to tell. I actually didn't sleep too well last night. There's a slight slant to the bed, so I kept kind of rolling back onto Nate. So it wasn't very comfortable, I would say, but I think I slept a good four or five hours. And then it also started raining. Turns out our shelter is waterproof. So that is an absolute win. I think I found my spot. Now, if you could just give me some privacy. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We had to survive in the jungle for about 27 more hours, but we were running out of food. If we wanted any dinner for tonight, we were going to have to catch it ourselves. Looking for a place to set up traps. We're going to be building them ourselves to catch some birds or mammals. Hopefully we catch some dinner tonight. The baboons are back. Maybe we can catch one of those. <laughs> or baboon catch you. We have a little bit of coconut left that we found yesterday, so we're gonna use that. And hopefully we can catch some birds, small birds. It's the trigger mechanism. So what we're looking for, we want a, a tree that has like a flex in it. Okay. Uh, gonna use this tree. As a trap, I'm gonna tie the string around it. Tie the string to it, trigger mechanism. Pressure of the tree will hold this up. And then we put these sticks here. When the animal comes, these sticks get pushed down, this one gets down, and then the tree goes. And then we'll have dinner. This one is a trap they call the spear. Doesn't that sound dangerous? Because that tree is bent all the way like that. And if you trigger it over here on this line, you made a trap that works. How cool is this? Got some coconuts. 
fish trap that we built ourselves. Took three people about three hours. So we've set out five traps. With a bit of luck, that means we get some dinner. Hope the jungle critters are hungry for coconut and preferably not too smart. That's Wendy's house. <laughs> Can't believe you built it in the middle of the night. Our first day in the jungle had already taken a toll on us. We were very dirty. After a good 30 hours of survival, my pants used to look like the whitest shade that you can see here. Kind of that color. They also didn't have this trendy little hole. Well, I'm, I'm being a little trendy. Turn around. You look like you just went down a mudslide. <laughs> it is flipping unbelievable how many mosquitoes there, oh, there are out here today. They're driving me freaking bonkers. I'm being eaten alive. I can feel them at any point. There's like five or six on me. It's crazy. Also, I seem to have this pretty big rash now on my back. Um, probably because of some ants that bit me or flies or whatever. I'm not really sure. It comes with the jungle experience, I guess. The night before, sitting around the campfire, Wendy had told us about a very scary type of bug. The botfly. I know, it looks innocent, but this little bug can inject larvae into your skin that eat away at your tissue until there's a literal fly living and growing inside your skin. That story was a harsh reminder that there are all sorts of weird critters in the jungle. I didn't realize it at this point, but I'd actually already gotten myself in trouble with the mystery rash on my back, which, well, you'll see in a little bit. So yesterday we built our shelter and our fire, but today we're gonna make it even better. We're gonna use everything that the jungle has to offer to make that happen. This is pretty soft on the inside and you can use it to make kitchen utensils with. When you Google survival courses in Central America, those are often run by big international companies, but we absolutely love getting to learn from locals. And Abba and Wendy taught us how to build something really cool from scratch. <coughs> Tear gas. Tear gas. Nice smoker oven built in the jungle with nothing but a machete. Okay, now I'm using a knife. I think this is the coolest thing ever. Mm. Sweet potato from our very own smoker in the jungle. Cheers. Mm. It's very smoky. It was only on there for an hour or something, so it works really well. Mm. I can't believe we now even have a smoker. Like none of this was here yesterday. Yesterday this was just jungle, overgrown, and now we have fire you have this super cool castle shelter we have a smoker unbelievable we might have some meat later yeah oh that would be so good smoke meat mm. Mm. <laughs> there goes the oven <laughs> a few hours later we went to check on our traps over there Oh, the next one is first one is right here. So there, see the stick belly? Oh yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Maybe. So far. Maybe something delicious will be walking around at night time. Mexico or Belize. Nothing. Nope. Well. You win some, you lose some. If you're putting out traps, it takes time and luck to catch something. Maybe the animals aren't in the mood for coconut. Maybe they could smell us a mile away, which at this point wasn't too unlikely. After a hard day of work, we were pretty hungry and disappointed that we didn't catch anything, but we did find something. 
Gonna make some jungle tea. Mm. And what's it called? Allspice. Allspice, okay. It's really good. It smells really good too. Do you like Amelia on there? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> on the way back, Abba spotted something pretty special up in the trees. The Nightwalker, which is a mammal with a long tail that mainly lives in the forest canopy. It's really like a big raccoon. Yeah, that's pretty big. Nice find, Abba. Yeah, very nice. Instead of focusing on the fact that we were hungry and we didn't have any food, we decided to just be grateful for this extraordinary moment, deep in the jungle, with some tea and good people to talk to. Be better with honey. Oh yeah. Mm. Maybe we can find some bees. Yeah. <laughs> Nice and herby. All spice tea from the jungle. And there's a spice. Mm -hmm. Good night, Abba. Good night, yeah. Wendy. Just gonna quickly make the bed. Something's gotten into my trousers. I think it's a bed. This is probably the point where I should have realized that my face wasn't just dirty, I was actually starting to get some weird swelling underneath my eyes. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Should have gone like this. It didn't. It didn't. Spear's also still here. Wow. Dinner and a breakfast. <laughs> Stomach's growing a bit. I kind of feel confident now though with the traps, like if you set up a lot and you wait for a couple of days, I think you'll catch something. I'm gonna miss it a little bit actually. Oh yeah, that's right. It's I'm starting to feel you. like home and I slept, actually slept really well last night. I feel like I have this newfound appreciation for the jungle now. It is just this incredible environment where it turns out you can do so much with just a machete. You made it. Bam. Made it. Thank you guys. The rescue! Never been happy to see a car. We thought we were leaving the jungle with new skills and unforgettable memories, but it seems I also left with a little surprise. My face was swelling like a balloon and I had a weird rash on both my arms. So we went to the ER where they told me that it is probably a skin reaction based on something that I touched or a bug that bit me. When we were in the jungle, they gave me a bunch of meds and now, a few days later, my face is pretty much back to normal or as normal as it ever was before. <laughs> it was a little bit more uncomfortable than we had probably anticipated doing the survival thing in the jungle. But the best things in life are right outside of your comfort zone. Bam. We made it! <laughs>